Okay, I want to look at a particular type of molecule, and that molecule is a beta dicarbonyl. So, let me draw out an example. One carbonyl, and then alpha, beta to that, a second carbonyl. And I'm going to pick a particular example that you're going to recognize from a reaction we've done before, which is the Claisen condensation. If you do the Claisen condensation with ethyl acetate, you end up with this molecule here, acetoacetate. Um, or ethyl acetoacetate. So, uh, why is this class of molecule special? Well, if you think back to the aldol reaction, you know that it's quite easy to deprotonate next to a carbonyl carbon, relative to deprotonating on an unsubstituted alkane chain. What happens if you have two alkanes? Well, just like we saw at the end of the Claisen condensation, the reason the Claisen condensation traps along here is that these hydrogens are much more acidic than they would be if there was just one carbonyl. And there are other examples of beta dicarbonyls that you can have a look at. So this could be a nitrile, it could be CN, or it could be a symmetric molecule. It could be what's called diethyl malonate. So malonic acid would be this molecule here. And if you make the diester of that, then you get diethyl malonate. Obviously the acid is going to deprotonate before we ever deprotonate the carbon. So this won't react in the same way, but this will react in the same way. Or as I was saying, you can replace one side with a nitrile and get similar reactivity. Although these hydrogens will be that little bit less acidic because the nitrile is that little bit less able to stabilize a negative charge on that position. But let's go back to the example we started with. So here we have um, our two hydrogens, either of which can be deprotonated. They're obviously both uh, identical uh, chemically. So let's put in a base. Well, it needs to be a reasonably strong base. If we put in something like sodium hydroxide though, if we attack here, we're going to form a tetrahedral intermediate and form a carboxylic acid. And so that's not the reaction we want to do. Supposing our base is sodium ethoxide, so here's the ethoxide part, should it attack here, just like in the Claisen condensation, that reaction won't actually go anywhere because it will attack, form a tetrahedral intermediate, reform the carbon oxygen double bond and kick out the same uh, ethanol eight um, or the same ethoxide as was used to start that reaction. So that's not going to go anywhere. So instead what's going to happen is it's going to deprotonate. And if we deprotonate, much like when you deprotonate for the aldol or alpha to a carbonyl, what you get is an enolate. So let's have a quick look at that enolate to see why this might be that little bit easier to do than the regular aldol reaction. So out everything that hasn't changed. Okay, we took this pair of electrons, one of the lone pairs in the oxygen, the one with the negative charge written on it, and we made a new oxygen-hydrogen bond. That's now ethanol. That's fine. We took the pair of electrons that was in this bond, we made a new carbon-carbon bond, and we took this pair of electrons and we put them up here. And so we made an enolate. But if we look at this enolate, this enolate can resonate. So you can move that pair of electrons there, that pair of electrons there, and that pair of electrons there, and form the other enolate that I could equally well have formed this time. So I could have made that happen. And in that case, what I would have got was this molecule here. So either form would have been acceptable. Well, they will resonate between the two forms so quickly that you can also draw it out like this. And so you can begin to see why this is so much better at giving away its proton than the equivalent uh, 
carbonyl over here. So the equivalent hydrogen alpha to a carbonyl, but just alpha to one carbonyl. So the equivalent ketone is so much less acidic than these are. Well, what are we going to do once we form this? These are reasonably good nucleophiles. They're not as good a nucleophile as, say, a regular enolate, because they are stabilized, but they will still act as nucleophiles. So let's put in an electrophile. And let's say our electrophile is um, bromoethane, for want of a different electrophile. Put in our bromoethane, what is going to happen? Well, exactly the same as might happen in an aldol reaction or a Claisen reaction, the enolate will act as a nucleophile from the carbon. So we'll reform a carbon oxygen double bond, take this pair of electrons, and in an SN2 fashion form a new carbon-carbon bond and kick out the bromine all at once. And what's our product going to look like? Well, our product is going to look like exactly what you'd expect by following the rules. So they are all the things that were there. Took that pair of electrons, made a new carbon-oxygen double bond. Took that pair of electrons, made a new carbon-carbon bond. Took that pair of electrons, and it's now on the bromine. You got bromide. So all we've done is alkylated this position in the middle. And so these are really useful for being able to alkylate here. And what you can do afterwards is you can heat these up in a basic solution to get rid of the ester to get a carboxylic acid, and then heat them up in an acidic solution and you'll get decarboxylation. And so you can get rid of this group and you formed your side chain. And you can alkylate it once, you can deprotate it, and you can alkylate it a second time. So it's a really useful little bit of chemistry that uh, allows you to make carbon-carbon bonds. So, beta dicarbonyls. Beta dicarbonyl. That's two carbonyls, alpha, beta, to each other. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, post them below or ask in lectures. That's all for now. Bye.